Hello everybody and thank you for joining me. My name is Noam and I will be walking you through our software development solution. Um, so I will show you exactly how to use the current solution as well as how to add and tweak the solution to match your exact needs. So let's get started. Our first board is the roadmap board and this is where we'll see all of our epics divided by all the quarters. So our groups are quarters as well as we have an uh, backlog group and in the backlog group we add all of our epics which later on we'll decide which quarter they're going to go to. So if we take a look at one of the epics it has an owner, a description, a timeline, priority, which quarter it's going to go to and we're going to actually connect tasks from the sprint to a specific epic so we can see an overview of our progress on this epic on this product roadmap board. So we can see the overall status, we can see a sum of estimated story points spent on this epic based on each of the task story points as well as an actual story point um, based on the actual tasks. And we have a very important field, which is the delta between the actual story points versus the estimation. Um, and this way we can see whether we're going to uh, finish things on time and whether we're on track or not. So you see that when the number is above zero, it shows us green, meaning I'm good. But right here we can see that it's below zero and it shows us red and that means trouble. So. Let's see how this works. So if I'm an R&D team lead and I'm planning out my quarters and right now it's Q4 and I want to add one of my the epics from the backlog to the current quarter. So what I'll do is I'll go here and I will change the status to this queue. Now our top group is always the current quarter and when, when I do that it's going to actually move to our top group. Um, so let's say uh, Q4 is done and now I'm planning Q1 for 2022. So I'll go here, I'll add a new group of items, I'll call it Q1, and again I will start now moving epics, and I can add new epics obviously, to my Q1 group. I will do that by going here and deciding that it's this quarter since this is my current new quarter. It's going to move automatically. So. Um, this is the, uh, the main view of our product roadmap. For each of the epics, if I click here, I can also see it in a different, more interesting way where I can see the uh, info altogether, some, the, some of the progress, the description, and I can actually add it this description. So you can basically add whatever you want here as you go, and all the linked tasks from my sprints, and I can see also what sprint we're currently working on. So what if I want to see my product roadmap on a Gunt? So I'll go to the Gunt view up here, and here we have uh, we have a view by the different quarters. But what if I actually want to see it also by my uh, by my Epic owners? So I will click here on the settings and simply group by the uh, Epic owner, and very easily I can customize my Gunt to see it exactly as I want it to be. So let's move on to talk about how we manage our sprints. So let's go to our sprint board. And obviously as R&D team leads, this is extremely important to us. Um, so each group here is a sprint. We also have a backlog just as we have on the product roadmap. Um, the top sprint will always be my current sprint. And you see that for each of the tasks, we're collecting a bunch of information regarding priority, type role, the estimated story points, the actual ones. Um, an integration with GitHub, I can insert the link to the pull request right here. I can also add dependencies. So if I have one task in my sprint that's dependent on another task, I can just connect them right here using our dependency column. And at the end, we have the link to the epic and the roadmap. So what if right now I just want to focus on our current sprint? So I'll go to the current sprint view to just see all of my tasks in the current sprint. I can also go to the current sprint progress, which gives me analytics regarding how I'm doing on this sprint. So overall progress, as well as planned um, story points and the done story points. And that gives me an overview of how much I have left to do. We also have a Kanban view, and this is a way for you R&D team leads to just see all of the tasks um, all of the tasks by their statuses um, and we also have a view for our backlog and this is in case we just want to see what we have left so we can plan ahead. 
Now, if I'm a developer and I actually want to see only the tasks that are assigned to me in the current sprint, then I'll go to the task assigned to me view and that would show me only the tasks that are assigned to me in the current upcoming sprint. So the current sprint is actually almost done and now I'm starting and I'm going to plan our next upcoming sprint. So what I'll do is I'll create a new group which would be called Sprint 3. And I will go to our backlog and start deciding on what's going to be in our next current sprint. So if I go here to all of my different tasks and if I change it to next sprint, it would actually automatically move to the top group, which is my new sprint group. So let me add all of the items from my backlog that I want to add to the next sprint. Once I've chosen the items, I want to make sure they all have estimated um, story points. I want to make sure that everybody has priority and I want to make sure that everything is assigned. But how will I know who to assign the task to based on my team's capacity? So this is what we have our sprint planning dashboard for. So if we go here, we see a bunch of very useful information. So first of all, we can see the planned story points for the upcoming sprint. Overall, we can see the capacity planning, which shows me a chart of all of my um, assigned team members and how many story points are already assigned to them. What I can also do in here, if I would like, I can go to the settings and actually add benchmark lines for each of my team members. So let's say that Daniel's benchmark is actually five story points. And let's say that the other user benchmark is actually six story points. And this way, very, very easily, I can see that, that both Daniel and user two are already above their uh, possible capacity. So I want to make sure that the last task I have list to assign here, I'm going to assign to some other team member. So let's assign it to Chris. And now if we go back to our sprint planning, we can actually see that they all have, um, that, that the capacity is divided um, in a way that makes sense. We also have a breakdown by the task type. We also have a breakdown by the priority and another view of our upcoming sprint task within the sprint planning dashboard. Let's move on to our bugs queue board. So this is where all of the incoming bugs will be shown. The bugs will be submitted via a form. So let's do this one together. Let's submit a bug together and it will be added to our new incoming uh, group on the bugs uh, board. Now here, my uh, me as R&D team lead, I want to make sure that all the bugs are being handled and I need to decide who will receive this incoming bugs. Um, so someone will need to monitor this or we can create a notification once a new bug has been submitted. Um, and then here we want to actually start progressing this. So the first thing we want to do is actually assign a developer to this bug. So let's assign Chris for this one. And then once the bug is in, I'll set its priority and I want to make sure that Chris gets it and starts working on it. So I'll change the status to ready for dev. This will give Chris a notification. He knows that he needs to start working on it. It will also move on to our DEX group of development work. And once it's done, it's going to move to our resolved bugs uh, group. If I'm a R&D team lead, I don't want to see all the different details of the bug, but I actually want to see some insights regarding to see how we can work better, resolve better, and uh, overall, what's our response rate, for example. So let's go to our bugs insights dashboard, dashboard for that. So here, first of all, we see all of the bugs that we have uh, that are currently being worked on. We can see bugs by different priority, bugs by source, so whether it's in-house uh, and support, um, we can see the bugs that have been opened in a month and the resolution time for bugs in a month, including our target resolution time. And we can see that we're a little bit over that. Let's say I want to also add uh, a chart that shows me um, how many bugs are assigned to me per developer. So I want to see my team's capacity. So I'll go here, I'll add a chart. I'll go in to the settings and I will choose the x-axis to show me the developer and the y-axis to actually show me a count of all the items. So all of my different bugs. Now I see how many bugs each of my team members has assigned to them. Um, when a new bug is coming in, I can also decide that it's actually gonna go um, to 
the sprints. So if I don't want to deal with it right now, I could move it to one of our sprints. And when I click on move to sprint board, it's actually going to go ahead and move it to the sprint board. And then I can go here into the backlog and start managing here as one of the uh, items in my sprints. So now I have this, I can either set it as, uh, uh, I can either leave it here and then when I have a new sprint, I can just add it to my next sprint. Last but not least, let's discuss our retros. So after every sprint, we want to reflect and get feedback and see how we can improve. And this is where our retros board come in handy. So and here we have a group for each sprint. The team members can add different feedback once the sprint is over regarding how it's been, how we've been doing. Choose the type, whether it's something to keep, a discussion, or something to improve. We can each, we can, all the team can take some time to vote on all of the different feedbacks added. And then once the team members have voted, we can then go ahead to the ones that have been voted on the most and actually discuss them, maybe add some action items, put owners, put a status, a due date, um, just to make sure that we're actually going to take care of this feedback and not leave it behind and make sure that we're getting better for next time. So this is it for our software development solution. Thank you for joining me and good luck with your successes in monday.com.